Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Now the question I'm answering right now is, what's in the box in regards to this surprisingly heavy rectangle coming from Rio Grande Games, published by Delicious Games, wherever I, in, in Canada, where I got my copy. This is a really well-known game with a reputation for being the terraforming Mars killer. And I am looking forward to find out if that's true, because that's one of my favorite games of all time. Now, this comes from Rio Grande Games. This is the latest printing of the game, which I know has a sticker on it. Oh, it's not even a sticker. It's right on the box that says promo included. So I don't know what the promo is, but the fact it's not even a sticker on the shrink wrap means probably every copy has this. I am expecting a ton of cardboard in here. The list of components is intimidating. And let's take a look at exactly what they look like. All I'm gonna do first is cut the shrink. So here you have my copy of Underwater Cities being opened for the first time. Bags and bags of stuff. Look at that, that is, that is a very packed. All right, we're gonna start with these cool things because they're just cool. These are domes, plastic domes that you will place onto your player boards to represent your underwater cities. There are two types, and I forget the special name for them, but the red ones are worth more points and they're harder to build. There is also a green one in here. I don't know what that is, maybe a first player marker. These are nice solid plastic. Like that's, there's nothing gonna break. And what I like is they've got a coating on them so you can't see through them which in a way is good because that way they don't get scratched up. There are random baggies just kind of in here. Just a little odd. <coughs> Though I do appreciate when companies do include extra baggies. Next, oh, more random baggies. All right, first I'm gonna try to find all these so I don't get them mixed in with that random. Okay, no more random baggies? All right. Wooden components. Uh, these, I think, if I remember correctly, are used for tracking things like your um, points and so on. Wooden cylinders and your different player colors. My understanding is these colors were chosen for people with color blindness issues, so that is something else appreciated, even though I don't personally suffer from it. Uh, there's also a clear token not in a player color for tracking which round you're in in the game. Solid components, this is exactly the kind of thing I expect from Rio Grande games. Next up, we have tons of plastic here. Well, tons, lots, lots of plastic in three different colors. These represent the different building types you can build in your cities and are placed on the game board next to your city. They come in three different colors to represent the three different things. I will admit, I don't remember the names of the individual buildings. These are little plastic cylinders, or not cylinders, discs that are fairly tiny. And one of the things I do know about this game that is a bit annoying is you do stack these while you are playing, and that can get just a little bit fiddly. So you would stack a couple together to represent different things. So there's a baggie full of those. Being a game that people compare to Terraforming Mars, we of course have a ton of cards. We're gonna put those aside for now. Then we have a very typical Rio Grande games player aid. If you don't know the game at all, this makes no sense to you. It is a bunch of icons pointing to each other and the kind of thing that scares non-gamers away from hobby board games. I admit this is a little flimsy, uh, I usually prefer something a little better, but it is plastic coated, so I doubt it would rip. And honestly, it's a player aid. So as a player aid, I don't mind it. There are four of those, one for each player. Then we have the rule book, which is surprisingly tall. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly so you can kind of see it. Um, I do like this. The time of the game does not give you an overall time that says 40 minutes per player. I appreciate that. Then we have, oh, this is a really nice, okay. More companies need to do this, I love this. It shows the back of the card and then what the cards look like. The back of the card, what the cards look like. Not enough board game component lists in uh, out there 
show the backs of the cards as well as the fronts. Like down here, we show the Era 1 deck is blue with cards, purple with cards. That is fantastic. You're even seeing the other sides of tiles here. So the tunnel tiles, you can upgrade them. They show both sides. Really appreciate this. This is fantastic. Moving on to how to set up the game. Lots of text. This is not a light game. So I expected that. Going through the gameplay summary, then looking at the details on the cards. Then I do like this. So there's some yellow callouts to some of the important rules. Looks like lots of examples here showing off the different icons. Yeah, plenty of examples. These pages look a little, little uh, more friendly than the others. Not a lot of artwork, but there's some interspersed here, which is cool. Um, this is showing, again, what all the different actions and the timing of actions are. Pretty much what I'd expect for a game like this. End of the round, so on. And then final scoring. So you're looking at the things you're going to score. Is every board, every player is going to have a random final scoring. Then you're getting points for your end of game cards that score points. You're also going to score your network you built, your network of cities, including the pipes and stuff. And then you're going to score your leftover resources. There are multiple tiebreakers. Um, as expected from a card-driven game, here is a list of specific details and specific cards that may not be clear. Pretty much what you'd expect, a great-looking um, icon summary on the back that seems a little less intimidating than this thing, which i got to say, this scares me, not, knowing how to, not having played the game. Then we're going to get to why this box was so heavy. Look at this. Look at that. That, that is a lot of cardboard. That's, that's approaching um, the colonist level of cardboard. Wow. So we're going to go through these punch boards fairly quickly just to flip them over. So what these are is your different resources in the game. And I don't want to mess it up, but it has to do with like food, metals, and science. I know they have a fancier name. I'm sorry I don't know it. And then there's also money. Um, these are tiles that are going to represent land that you can connect to in the game. These are tunnels you're going to build between your cities. And of course, everything is two-sided, so these can be randomized. Some of the tiles can be upgraded, so your tunnels start at this level and can be upgraded to that level. These are individual resources, so these count as three each. These each count as one. I do love the fact that the icon for three is three of this picture gathered together. So this is a worker placement game. Except it's a door placement game. So these are your doors that you are going to place on spots on the board to do things. So it's an interesting choice there. Um, and then we have a whole bunch more tunnels. And then just in case the times threes aren't enough, you also have times five and times tens. So we have two sides here. Moving on to more cardboard with lots of money. And you can tell just how well these are punched because they're falling out as I sit here. A ton more resources. Then one of the biggest cardboard chunks is your individual player boards. These are two-sided, and it looks like they offer variants. So the second side is not the same as the first, and there's more interesting stuff on this side. Now, from what I understand, these are things you will gain for placing in an area. So if you place here, you get five bucks, whereas on this side, you place there, you don't get anything. So these are the individual player boards. Then we get to the game board, which I will probably have to zoom out to show you. So here you have the player board for Underwater Cities. Again, it is two-sided. I don't know the difference on the two sides off the top of my head. And what you have, what you have here are worker placement spots. So those doors are going to put on this edge. And then these are all different spots. You can do different actions. These are end game scoring cards you can grab. Or sorry, these are going to be end game scoring cards. These are other cards you'll be able to purchase and so on. This is a, a part of the game where you're adjusting player order. And there's a whole bunch of other things. Like you can discard cards to be able to draw cards and so on. Um, that is all way beyond an unboxing video. So you do have three different types. And the gameplay involves activating these spots and playing cards from your hands to combo with. And that's it. For the main components, we are going to take a quick look at the cards. Oh, so this says promo one. So I don't know. That, that must This must be one of the promo cards that's included. Here we have the people you can hire cards that go in the center of the board. A little disappointed, it all features the same art, but that's all different stuff at the bottom. Okay, so they are mixed here, which is a little annoying. So we have a bunch of mixed cards here, probably your starting hand of cards. It's going to be three there in the player colors. All feature drawn artwork with a mix. Is that, that might also be drawn. I'm not sure why we have a rebel pilot from Star Wars. Sure looks like a rebel pilot from Star Wars. 
These appear to be reference cards. Yeah, okay, so these ones are reference cards. In addition to that already player reference cards. These are the end game scoring cards that go out onto the board. So we have a number of different ones there that all feature pretty similar artwork, but they do different things. So these are available to purchase, but they're very expensive. Then we have the Era 1 cards. So these are going to be cards you can purchase that come out in Era 1, or sorry, that you draw from. And Era 1's not a deck builder. So we have a bunch of Era 1 cards. So you can see a few of these. I am not going to go through the whole deck. Artwork is serviceable. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. I don't see the problem that some other card games have had with a mix of art styles. These all seem to be pretty consistent. I am seeing duplicate art for it for different effects. Oh, set. technically it's not, because that's green and these are yellow. But it's just some kind of Photoshop coloring there. All different cards, including the card effects at the top, some text. Uh, which means the game is not language independent, which is important to note, even though there's tons of icons. So that's all the Era 1 cards. Then we have Era 2 and 3 cards. Again, I'm going to quickly go through some of these just so you can see them. But I expect more of the same with more card effects. And again, if you don't know the game... So the Era 2 cards, again, are using a lot of the same artwork for different effects. What is important to me is how functional they are. These look clear to read from across the table, which is good. Um, plus, they're going to go into your hand. It looks like you're probably going to want to hold your cards like this while playing to see the various effects, because most of them just have artwork at the bottom. And then Era 3 cards. Same deal, right? They're going to have this. This is going to have a lot more end-of-game scoring, which this is all about get money for this or convert money into this. Here we have more end-game scoring style instance and so on. It's cards. It's a card game where you're going to combo your cards with actions. As I expected, there are lots of cards. One promo card. Like As far as I can tell, this is the promo. This is the only thing you get. Oh, and it's the green dome. So there you go. That green dome is a promo. Underwater Cities. So there you have what you get in the box for Underwater Cities from Rio Grande Games, my personal copy published by Delicious Games. So there you have a look inside the box for Underwater Cities from Rio Grande Games my copy coming from Delicious Games. I am really looking forward to playing this game. Some uh, component quality was as I expected. There's a ton of cardboard, mostly for tracking resources. There's player boards, there's plastic domes, there's little city discs, and a ton of cards. Cards split over three eras as well as starting cards. I have heard such good things about this game. I cannot wait to get this to the table and play it, which may be happening tonight, which is awesome. But to get it to the table tonight means I got to go now. So good night. Before I go, hold on. One more thing. You can find my content, tabletopbellhop.com. Find me all over the internet, tabletopbellhop, one word. And if you dig this and would like to support my continued efforts at creating content, you can visit patreon.com and consider tipping your bellhop. Now you can go.